woke up, I got a sleeping bag tied around me. You can see there's crazy mist going on today, this morning. And uh, yeah, I don't have too much further to go. I didn't really bring any rain gear, so <laughs> uh, I've got the mercy of land, but I think I'll be all right. I'm gonna meet Sarah in about 10 miles along the trail. So as long as I don't get thumped by this rainstorm, I'll survive. It's starting to sprinkle a little bit right now though. We'll see what happens. Hi, good morning. Uh, so last night I played in Ashland um, and I didn't get, um, I didn't leave Ashland until about 11.30 at night and I headed up to Mount, Mount Ashland, um, just a few miles north of the town. Uh, but it, uh, I, as I got further and further up the mountain, I started, we, I started getting in the clouds and uh, it just started getting really, really intense and I uh, somehow got lost and wound up on top of the mountain. Definitely not where I'm supposed to be. Um, so last night it was just so, I guess, cloudy. I, I just pulled over and kind of threw everything in the front and tried to get some sleep, but the wind has been howling all night and um, now it's about six in the morning and it hasn't let up and these I was hoping that these clouds would have gone away but that is not the case I'll show you um, the visibility since it's daylight has gotten better so I'm gonna try to make it down I'm here. I have to meet Matt here in the next little bit. <sighs> the adventure continues. <laughs> Mist everywhere. There's something surreal about being in the mountains. You're out here like this and it's uh it's incredible. I mean look at this. I got clouds coming through the trail. Yeah. Looks like the sun's starting to finally break through. I was getting a little bit worried there because I had some sprinkles coming in, but uh, uh, heavenly sun's gonna come in, warm me up. Should be a beautiful day. Walking, getting some juices flowing, and uh, I'm feeling a little bit tight. Hopefully I'll loosen up and a little bit start start jogging again but for now uh, it's just good to be out here it's amazing terrain out here incredible incredible <laughs> yeah that's what happens when you're cold yeah absolutely fabulous clouds there. That's why they call it the Pacific Crest Trail. Right above the clouds. After a big climb out of Syad Valley, I'm finally here at the Oregon-California border, and I'm signing this Pacific Crest Trail register as my former trail name that I had in 96, Gazelle. 
Hey everybody, it's uh, next morning. Sorry, lots, lots happened. My camera battery died yesterday. I met up with Sarah. It was uh, so good to see her. Um, basically, from the point I met her, it's, uh, it's only 28 miles to the next spot where I'm actually gonna cross Interstate 5. So I'm gonna meet her down there. So I dropped the waste pack. I still have the camera equipment, as you can see, and, and the water bottles, and uh, just filming. <laughs> Yeah, those first, two, first day and a half were a bit rough, but uh, I was starting to feel better. Uh, I had to stop down a little bit, and that R&R &R with Sarah definitely helped. Cleaned up a little bit, gave a little trim. So, yeah, back on the trail. You see a beautiful sunset coming up behind me. Beautiful morning. We'll see how the day goes, and I'll keep you posted. Hopefully cover some plants today, a little bit more about some travel techniques and different tips and things out here while being out on the Pacific Crest Trail heading to Canada. Hey everybody, just want to introduce this plant to you. This is called yarrow and uh, has a, a member of the Umbel family. And this is a really nice plant for purification, for sweat lodges. And uh, the leaves are just they're really soothing and grounding. The smell of it, the taste of it. You can make a tea out of it if you want to cleanse yourself before you go in a sweat lodge or just general cleansing. You don't want to overdo the tea because it is a strong medicine. But sometimes I like to take just a little bit of it. And uh, I'll stick it in a water bottle. And just let it soak. I, sometimes I also like to heat this tea up because it definitely gets the juices in there. But when you're traveling light like this, you can't, can't afford to always stop down and cook. You can also make teas just in your water bottle. Let them soak for a while. And this is definitely no exception. I'll show you this leaf a little closer here. So that's what it looks like. Beautiful plant. It's a... Uh, this plant also is really good if uh, if you've got like a, a wound or something, you cut yourself badly and you, you need to um, stop the bleeding for that. This is a great anticoagulant as well. You can mash it up, stick it in the wound and it'll stop the bleed. Some people use it for toothache too. You can pack it into a, a filling that might have might have popped out. So if you're in pain that way, that's also a good medicine. Yarrow. Looks like I'm coming up on a spring right here. Beautiful little spot. Let's see if there's any water. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's just trickling out, so I'm just gonna gather a drink straight from the source here. Oh, oh yeah, that's nice. seem to be getting in a little bit lusher zone so not quite as concerned with with water I've been seeing it every couple miles so that's nice some of the bigger springs been filling up the water bottle but you know little spots like that you just put your head down get a drink you know, it's always a risk drinking from water in the backcountry for sure without purifying it but I've been doing it for most of my life and haven't really had too much issues with it I've had Giardia twice won't lie um, I've used plants and herbs to cure it so there is that risk just know anytime you don't purify your water or it's a questionable source but if you're in a real survival situation and you decided not to purify or drink water or decided not to drink water because you couldn't purify for several days and you went dehydrated, that's even worse. So, just remember, once upon a time we lived on the surf and we could put our head right down the creek and drink some of that pure water. Here there's some, uh, some dandelion greens. Uh, beautiful greens right there. 
nice plush dandelions. These are, dandelions are fairly easy to identify. Um, nice thing about them is that uh, there's not a lot of plants that look like this that are poisonous. There's, there's a lot of mustard greens, um, chicory, uh, salsify, other plants that have similar look, but, but a plant like this generally is not gonna kill you. So um, with dandelions, one of the things about them is they are a little bit bitter, but they're actually really good for the liver of purifying, and, and they're pretty available all over the United States. So if you find these, you know, this is a good chance to get your vitamin A, C, minerals, calcium, potassium, magnesium, all those things that keep your electrolytes moving, that keeps your body from cramping up, and uh, that's a great source of food, greens, nutrition, if you can't find anything else, so dandelions. You belong amongst the wildflowers. You belong in a boat out at sea. Sail away, let your heart find another. You belong somewhere, you feel free. Wildflowers everywhere. Makes me think of Tom Petty. <laughs> Running a trail like this is completely magical. You have this epic terrain all around you and you're moving across the land, human power. And there's a meditation just to having your feet pound against the soft earth over and over. And you just lose yourself in that space. Love vistas like this out on the trail. It's looking down in that gorgeous valley when you're running. Sheep Camp Spring. One mile, Ringel Gap 3. Hey, check out some of the generosity you see out here on the trail. These guys have left. We can see that four long distance PCT hikers. Soda cans. <laughs> I'm not much of a soda drinker, so I think I'll pass that up, but it's awesome to see a people support being out here on the trail. So I've been running all morning and uh, yeah, feeling pretty tuckered, but uh, awesome to be out here. The trail this morning has been unbelievable. You see wildflowers behind me, and if I pan over here, looking right down that valley, you see uh, Interstate 5, and way over off in the distance is Mount Shasta, just capped over there with some, some clouds. Incredible. I've seen Interstate 5, it's a good sign because that means I'm a little bit closer to seeing Sweet Sarah down there at the bottom. I'm gonna keep on running. 